Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me as we continue to read the account in Genesis chapter 2 of the Garden of Eden, which God prepared for Adam to live in. At this point, we've been told that God had formed man out of the dust of the earth and he'd become a living being. And God had planted a garden we're told it was eastward in Eden. The explanation is written probably by Adam himself reporting to his generation about the garden in which he had lived at the very beginning but which was no longer accessible to them. And so he indicates the direction it is from where they are. In other words, Adam was living west of the garden at the time this account was written. And the characteristic of the garden was that it had pleasant plant in it. It was a delightful place to live in. And there were two particular trees that were mentioned in verse 9, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. As we continue our reading, we see that there was a river in the garden and this river flowed out of the garden and petitioned up the land where Adam was living. And so we have the names of the rivers and a little bit of characteristics of those lands. And we have the instruction given this morning to us that Adam could eat of any tree in the garden, except he was not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Let's read from verse 10 of Genesis 2. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four river heads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one which encompasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. Bedillium and the onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gion. It is the one which encompasses the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Hidekel. It is the one which goes towards the east of Assyria and the fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. They were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. And may the Lord bless these words to us. First of all, the garden is watered by a river, whose source is in the Garden of Eden, but which divides its reverse situation to what we commonly find today, where lots of streams joined together to form one big river which then flows to the sea. But here we have one river that parts and becomes four river heads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one which encompasses the whole land of Havilah. We have names then of the rivers uh, Pishon, Gion, Hidekel and Euphrates. The Euphrates is the name of a river that's in the Middle East, and Hidekel is the Hebrew name of the Tigris River, so that river is also named. 
and the name Kush is the biblical name for northern Africa and Assyria is the biblical name for the area between the Tigris and Euphrates. Uh, so these names were taken and reused after the flood to define the areas of the earth as the first men settled because they had the memory of the earlier names. It's exactly the same kind of thing as when you come to New Zealand and find names of towns based on England. New South Wales, the name Wales comes from Wales in the British Isles. And so when people move into a new territory they often bring the names of other places with them. And so this is the explanation why the names, particularly Tigris and Euphrates of Assyria and Cush come to us down through the ages. They're not exactly the same place, but the names have been brought forward and reused after the flood. Now, God had a purpose for man in the garden. It was to tend and to keep it, that is to cultivate. In other words, God intended that Adam should be looking after the garden. He should not just be an observer, but a participant in. He was given the right and ability to, to design, to plan, to put trees here and to move them there, and generally to enjoy working in the garden and keeping it nice. When uh, trees grew too rank, to cut them back and to prune them, and basically to maintain the garden. And for looking after the garden, Adam was entitled to eat of every tree of the garden, except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we have the warning given, in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. There's two special trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And in one sense, God is giving man a choice. Will he choose evil, disobedience, or will he choose life? And later on, the Bible tells us, choose life. Why will you die? That was the choice that Adam made. But it wasn't presented to him in a uh, formal, you must make a decision. It was presented to him in the form of two trees. And he was told not to eat of the second tree. We'll leave the discussion of Adam and company for him, but from verse 18 we find that Adam, for all the possibility of labour that he has, really doesn't have anyone of an equal to communicate with in the garden. And so God brings him the animals. They are not satisfactory. And so God creates Eve. But more of that tomorrow. Tomorrow.